Praise God, brethren, and we thank God for this opportunity. God is good. He gives us chance to continue reflecting on his word. Let us pray, Father God in heaven, thank you for this opportunity that you give us today to continue reflecting on your word. And we read about personalities in the Bible, men and women that moved along with you. And because they did, you blessed them. Lord, we pray that you continue blessing us as we continue with our journey in this faith and so that we shall continue being a pleasing people to you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank God for this program, Finding God. Forever we shall be grateful because the Bible keeps telling us about God's love for us. And I have always said we love him because he first loved us. And so it is something that I will keep thanking God for and for this program that continues airing so that actually we reach our levels higher and higher to find God and to know what he wants us to do. And so that while we are here on earth, we please him and thereafter we attain eternal life. And so this program is good. And so we need to continue thanking God that we are here on earth to walk the journey. Life is a journey. Spiritual life is a journey. So we keep walking it. I have walked mine and I will keep walking it. You have walked yours and you will keep walking it. And so as we walk, we follow in the footsteps of those that have gone before us. And so I keep now introducing to you, I come now to introduce to you the personalities of the Bible men and women that we shall be looking at in our, no, in our desire to find God. How did these men, how did these women walk their walk? Of course, actually people talk about walking the talk, but I am coming with a message to say walk the walk, following the footsteps of our ancestors, men and women that have lived before us, and they give us as an example to continue following what God desires for us. So we are here to begin this journey of biblical personalities, studying and following in their footsteps, and so that you and I can live a life that pleases God. And of course, we say finding God, yes, in our footsteps, in our lives, in our workings, in our dealings with other people, to find God in our relationships, to find God in our workings, in our, you know, in our testimony that we give. And this is something that we have to live by. And so I just want us to, lead, to get straight to one of the scriptures about the men and women. And this you can never run away from Hebrews chapter 11, where the writer gives us a line of men and women that walked by faith. And so by faith, we understand how our elders, these men, that we read about, uh, moved about, how they pleased God. And the Bible says in this Hebrews that actually these men walked the way, walked the, the walk. And the Bible says that now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things that are not seen, that for by it the people of old received their commendation. Now, friends, these people of old that the writer is talking about that they received their commendation from God is the very thing that actually you and I have to look for. How shall we be commended by God? And so that we shall be able to find him and so that we shall be able to please him and so that we can live a life that God desires. And so this Hebrews chapter 11 is a chronology of things and this is the testimony that we receive about men and women of old. And so we shall be going times to come to talk about some of them and see how they can impact our life for you and me. And so we need to take note that in the studies that we have about these men and the women of old, how they found God and how God also founded them. And this for us will derive instruction. They teach us what pleases God. Of course, actually we shall be mentioning some names beginning from the Old Testament times of the Bible and going on into the New Testament times of the Bible. How did the people please God? And how 
did God treat those that did not please him? And all of them, they are number one for our instruction. We learn something from them, something that can please God. What does God want us to do? What does God want me to do in order to please him? And to walk the way he wants me to walk. And so that I may not remain ignorant of what pleases God. And so this is for my nourishment and knowing what pleases God is for your nourishment because without him we cannot be. And so we need to know, we need to be instructed, we need to learn how to please God. And this is very, very important. The reason why I, we needed to take time to think about these men and women, how they pleased God, how they lived their lives. And those that did not please, please him, how did they end up? And so we also learn about the implication of truth as applied. And the truth we work because God himself is truth. And so the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ at one moment says that you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And how did this man and the women know the truth and how did it set them free? And so this time I'm just spreading through and we shall be going one by one, a few of them, so that actually we can know how to live in truth can set us free and you need to live in truth so that it can be set free. And number three is that there are warnings that we find in these personalities, in these characters, that we may not fall in sometimes in the similar situations, in the similar temptations that they went through. For instance, if you read something about David, the man after God's own heart, of course, because there were things that he did that pleased God. But if we went deeper into the life of David, there will be lessons that we find and so that we may not fall into the same temptations. How about the Abrahams of, this, of, the, of the Bible? How about you know, Joshua? How about Moses? How about Ruth? How about you know, Esther? And all those personalities. So we are saying that there are warnings that we find in these personalities, and we need to know them. And so that as you live your life here on earth, you live a life that is pleasing to God. And so we learn to find a way of escape also, was there anything that actually these people did to escape the wrath of God? Say, so for instance, the children of Israel, when they were moving from Egypt to the Promised Land, there are lots of warnings there. Those that were keen to obey moved from Egypt to the Promised Land. And the Bible talks about only two people, Joshua and Caleb. But the rest actually perished in the way. But now there were warnings that were sounded. And so how can we live so that we can escape so that we can live a life that is pleasing to God. So we learn to know the outcomes of those temptations. So friends, our life is a life of learning. It's a life of instruction. Our life is a life of implications. When we live in the truth, the implications that we can derive from God's word. And then from the warnings that are, we also derive our escape. And so that we can live a life that God wants us to live. And so also studying these characters, you discover that we, it gives us hope. Many times I've talked about hope. And someone who lives without hope is a very, very dangerous person. But you and me, in our Christian walk, in our Christian life, we are called upon to be a people of hope. And now how did these people, Bible men and women, live in hope? And that actually they were able to see, to live for another day. And so in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39 to 40, the Bible does mention that all the heroes of faith lived and they obtained of a good testimony through faith, but did not receive the promise. Now, for us who are living now, because they did not receive the promise because it was promised during that time. And for us who are living in the promised times, we are the beneficiaries of those promises. Now, when the Lord Jesus Christ does mention something that I will be with you near the end of age, in Matthew chapter 28, 19, and following, following, actually, the promises were future-looking. And what is the future? And so the reason why I jubilate in my heart when I'm talking about God's word, that actually those promises were pointing to us. When he says, I will be with you, actually, it was pointing unto us. And so in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, the Bible does mention 
that in 15 verse 4, the Bible does mention that for whatever was written in the former days, former days, was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. And so since these scriptures were written, and they were written to show us what to do, they were written for us for our learning, they were written for us that through them we can you know, benefit through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. So friends, I invite you into this hope that you will not live as a person who is a, a, a hopeless being, but a person full of hope. And we read about personalities like Elijah, and like we read in James chapter 5, verse 17, Elijah, like anyone else, the Bible says that he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain for three and a half years. You see, prayer. And so we are going to derive this, these lessons from these men and women. And so that when you are praying, you pray earnestly. So that we, when you are living, you live with hope. And these times are so hopeless times. And so you need this. So we meet men and women in these scriptures who are like us, but experienced God's workings in their lives and on their behalf. So you and I, we need to meet God so that he may work in us, in our lives and on our behalf. We always sing that he is the one who fights our battles. Yes, working on our behalf. And therefore it is edifying to realize that we, God can indeed do extra in our lives. And these things, he does them, he does extraordinary things in ordinary beings. I am just ordinary. You are ordinary, but God can use you. God can do great things. And we see men in the Bible and women whom God used to do extraordinary things, and he can use you as well during this generation and during this time here. So we get to know that we are not always immediate. We don't always see, sometimes also see immediate results, but that there will always be waiting. And this man in the Bible waited. Therefore, you and I, are you praying for something? Are you waiting for something? Please continue waiting because... There was a time we talked about persistence, insistence, and desistence. You persist, you insist, and you desist from doing certain things. And then God will answer your prayer. So friends, through this, we learn to wait. And in Psalms, we read about a Psalm which tells us that be still and know that God is God. And so there is waiting. And so in these scriptures that we find ourselves looking at, and even the, the, the gems that we talked about, 517, when Elijah was praying, there was nothing that happened there immediately, but he had to wait and it came to be fulfilled. So my brothers and sisters, this season, talking about biblical figures, we are just to learn, to be instructed on how we live our lives here on earth, and to have hope, like they did have hope, and also to wait, to be patient. God calls us to be a patient lot of people. And so I take this honor to thank God for this time that he gives us to think in scripture, like we've been reading a few of them. We've been talking about a few personalities here, and now we shall be singling out one by one for not all of them, but a few of them, so that we derive some lessons to enable us to continue moving in this life that God has earmarked for us. Each one has a race. And like in Hebrews chapter 11, we see these people through faith. They moved their journey and it was reckoned upon them as, their, as faith and they lived a life that is pleasing to God. So let us continue reading Hebrews chapter 11 about those heroes and other men and women in the Bible. And you and I learn something to continue being good people here on earth. Yes, but in heaven we receive eternal life. And so it's a life of repentance, it's a life of, of hope, it's a life of forgiveness, it's a life of, of prayer, it's a life of insisting, it's a life of patience. And may God help us this time around. And I want to thank God for you who keeps tuning in to listen to this, to open this and know what God, what God is encouraging you to do today. May God bless you for me. And as we shall continue with this journey, may he move along with us because spiritual life is a journey and a journey that has to be accomplished in eternal life that will be God will give us in heaven. May God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.